Hello viewers, my name is Kavya Arar, final year MBBA student from Sri Mugambiga Institute of Medical Sciences. Today, I will be giving you on a review of case presentation on previous cesarean section which was already presented during SMART UG 2023. SMART UG stands for Sri Mugambiga Academic Review and Training, an exam oriented rapid review which was held in 2023. We had an opportunity to present case to the faculties all over the nation which was held exclusively for pre-final year and final years. And I'm so very happy to be here. So starting from the introduction, a cesarean section or a C-section is a surgical procedure used to deliver a baby through incisions which are made over the mother's abdomen and uterus. This method is often employed when the vaginal delivery poses risk both to the mother and the baby. So that is when a cesarean section is mostly done. A few decades before, a normal delivery was normal that time. But what normal was that time is not normal now. Because now normal deliveries are not very much often, but operation delivery, that is a C-section, is very much common. Whoever you ask, from our families, friends or anyone, who are pregnant and they are delivering, that time most of them are delivering through an operated delivery. So have you ever wondered what is the reason for this increasing, that is significantly increasing, incidence of the cesarean deliveries? That is because of the many factors that are increased maternal age, higher rates of obesity, a greater prevalence of conditions like diabetes, hypertension which precipitates a gestational diabetes mellitus, preeclampsia, eclampsia and additionally caesarean may be sometimes planned also for various reasons including previous caesarean births obviously that is the case which I am going to discuss today, multiple pregnancy, fetal distress during labour and these are all also some of the precipitating factors which are responsible for going through a caesarean delivery. We have three approaches for the women who have underwent a previous caesarean section. The three approaches are, first is an uh, ERCD, that is elective repeat caesarean section, caesarean delivery. Uh, second is a TOLAC, that stands for trial of labor after caesarean. And then last be back, which is vaginal birth after a caesarean section. So, uh, ma'am asked the question, that is, what are the complications that can come for a woman who will be undergoing a TOLAC? Are two mainly, that is first, a uterine dehiscence and a uterine rupture. So we need to understand the difference between a uterine dehiscence and a uterine rupture. So looking at the uterine dehiscence first, it is an incomplete uterine scar separation. That is not completely the scar is getting disrupted, but it is an incomplete. And whereas the visceral peritoneum here remains intact. And sometimes it can even go unrecognized when the uterine scar is not explored after vaginal delivery. And uh, looking at the risk of hemorrhage and adverse maternal and perinatal outcomes, it is not that bad as it is for uterine rupture. And now next, seeing at the uterine rupture, it is uh, defined as a complete disruption. There we saw as uh, incomplete and here it is a complete dis dis disruption of the uterine scar, including the visceral peritoneum. This is a very much catastrophic event where the woman uh, is at risk, even the child is at a risk of hypoxia. Uh, here uh, the women can present with uh, various uh, signs and symptoms which, can, which we can uh, find out clinically. Now the question was put forth that how can we predict that a scar might rupture while going through the procedures such as trial of labor after a cesarean section or a VBAC that is a vaginal birth after a cesarean section. 
Although the attempts have been made to predict the risk of a scar dehiscence using an ultrasonographic measurement of thickness of the lower uterine segment, but it has been proved that it's not useful to some extent. So ma'am emphasized on having a clinical approach in finding out a patient with a scar dehiscence or a scar rupture. So in case while during labor, if there is any abnormal fetal heart tracing, including a baseline tra- bradycardia, tachycardia, variable and late deceleration or maternal tachycardia, which can be a suggestive of scar dehiscence and it warrants for an immediate cesarean section. And maternal hypotension, which is a late sign, it indicates uterine rupture with internal hemorrhage. So these all things need to be kept into consideration while we are managing the patient. Now the next question arises. Who all are the candidates for a trial of labor? Who are fit for a trial of labor? So those are history of prior uh, vaginal delivery, history of prior successful VBAC, onset of factors spontaneous labor at less than 40 weeks of gestation, fetal weight not suggestive of macrophagia, non-recurrent indications for previous cesarean section, for example, fetal malpresentation or fetal distress. Now looking at the factors that decrease the chances of a successful VBAC are following which are importantly we need to know is the advanced maternal age, BMI less than uh, 35 kgs per meter square, induced labor, no previous vaginal birth, previous cesarean section for dystocia, postpartum pregnancy, estimated weight more than uh, 3.5 uh, to 4 kgs, occipital posterior position and deflection, inter-delivery de- interval that is delivery time between two uh, pregnancies less than 18 months, cervical dilatation should be less than 4 cm on the admission in labor. So these are the important points that should be kept in the mind before uh, letting a patient to undergo a VBAC. So the next question ma'am asked was, irrespective of the previous cesarean section, in which all cases she has to be taken at this elective cesarean section at any cost that are high risk uterine scars like two or more previous cesarean scars, inverted T incision or J incision, classical cesarean section like this, these scars are very uh, risk for rupture, previous ure- uterine rupture or obstetric uh, complications such as uh, placenta previa, placenta accreta, uterine anomalies or even uh, limited facilities that are available in the hospital such as surgical uh, anesthesia, nursing, pediatric staff and blood and blood product. Now last but not the least, we need to know the guidelines to be followed for a successful VBAC that are first, facilities and personnel for immediate caesarean section, labour should be monitored carefully, induction of labour should be avoided only a mechanical induction should be given that is the, by a trans cervical foley's catheter is preferable method next is that augmentation of labor should be carried by judicious use of oxytocin and epidural analgesia may sometimes mask the signs and symptoms of a uterine rupture but still uh, its contraindicated is not been uh, yet told then then the mother should be monitored during the labor with hourly pulse hourly bp and cardiotocography if available and abnormal fetal heart tracing Baseline bradycardia, tachycardia, variable late deceleration and maternal tachycardia. These are suggestive of scar dehiscence and if at all the mother has hypotension which is a late sign and that indicates uterine rupture with internal hemorrhage. So after a successful VBAC, exploration of the uterine cavity is practiced by many. So viewers, if at all a patient comes to your OP with uh, management for uh, pregnancy with previous caesarean section, you should have this approach that is first you should know which uh, approach you will come under that is uh, ERCD that means an elective repeat cesarean section or a TOLAC or a VBAC then after knowing all these three op- approaches you should know the two main complications of it that is a uterine dehiscence and a uterine rupture after knowing these complications you should know that whether the patient is a good candidate for a trial of labor what all can be the possible contraindication for the patient to undergo a VBAC and how you will predict that the scar would rupture during a labor and at last we have uh, discussed about the management what are the management how we will be uh, looking after the patient that all are the point which i wanted to emphasize on and obviously thank you for hearing